In this presentation module, we talk about the very first attack on logic locking, which we refer to as sensitization attack. Um, in um, 2012, five years back, uh, we came up with this first attack, and then later on there were other attacks as well. But this was the work where um, we defined a threat model, we said the attacker has access to these assets, and uh, we talked about a technique that uh, is able to extract the key from a logic locked uh, netlist. Um, so in sensitization attack, uh, in any attack on logic locking, for that matter, uh, the goal is to extract the secret key, to figure out the, what the secret key is. Um, in the threat model uh, that we define in this early work, and uh, pretty much all the subsequent attacks follow the same threat model, um, the attacker is assumed to have access to a locked netlist, uh, which can be obtained by reverse engineering a functional chip, or and as well as the functional chip itself, uh, which embeds the um, logic locking key on its uh, secure tamper-proof memory. And this, this uh, IC is used as an oracle uh, by the attacker. So the attacker uh, uh, applies simulation tools on the encrypted netlist, produces input patterns, applies these input patterns to the oracle, to the functional chip, to sensitize the key bits to the outputs. Now, um, when I say sensitized, this is a concept, this is a technique that is adopted from VLSI testing, and we discussed these two modules earlier. So this means that it's not only the defenders that can leverage principles and concepts from, from VLSI testing, attackers can also use these concepts and principles to develop powerful attacks. Um, and this is what we illustrate next. So the way sensitization attack work it works is as follows. So the idea is to sensitize the key bit to one of the outputs. In this uh, toy example, we have three inputs and one output, and we have uh, in this logic lock netlist one key gate and one key bit, just to illustrate the idea. So the idea is to sensitize K1 to O1, and this can be done by applying all zeros from the inputs. If we apply all zeros, then K1 receives zero, uh, on its bottom input, and G3 also receives 0 on its bottom input, and this is very important because 0 is the non-controlling value of an OR gate, and G3 is an OR gate. So this 0 allows the output of K1 to propagate to O1. This way, the value of the key, uh, which is illustrated by X1 on this example, is sent, is, uh, sent to the output O1 as is. So it's a bijective mapping, sensitization means bijective mapping from the key line to the output, and in this case the bijective mapping is the identity function itself. So whatever the value of the key is, it will show on the output O1 when 0, 0, 0 is applied to the chip. So this pattern is taken to the oracle, to the chip, and when it's applied to the inputs, output O1 will just uh, show the value of the key. So how do we protect against uh, the sensitization attack? The same work uh, presented a defense called strong logic locking, SLL. So to prevent sensitization attack, we need to make sure that it's very difficult to sensitize keys, key bits, to the output. And this can be done by making sure that the key lines uh, interfere with each other. So key gates are inserted so that the key lines eventually converge or they block each other's path so they somehow interfere with each other. When we do so, it becomes very difficult to sensitize the key bits to the outputs um, independently. So for instance, to sensitize K1 to the outputs, we need to be able to control K2 because K2 interferes with K1. They both converge at G4. Um, without knowing the value of K2, you can't sensitize K1 and vice versa. Without knowing the value of K1, you cannot sensitize K2 to the outputs as well. So this way you cannot individually sensitize the key bits to the outputs. You are forced, if you're employing the sensitization attack, you are forced to uh, attack key bits altogether rather than attacking them individually. This is the uh, 
This is the main idea behind this defense. It protects against sensitization attack. And um, this can be done uh, in an iterative fashion. Um, we have developed this security metric uh, that, is, that has to do with the size of a clique in a graph. So we create this graph, which is called the interference graph, that, that shows whether the inserted key gates interfere with each other. And the idea is to make sure that key gates interfere with each other as much as possible and all of them interfere with each other in a pairwise fashion. So we try to maximize the size of the clique in this interference graph. In this example, for instance, all three key gates interfere with each other, resulting in a clique of size 3. So the metric defines the security level against sensitization attack. Ideally, if we're inserting um, 100 key bits, we'd like to make sure that all 100 of them interfere with each other in a pairwise fashion. This way, we can say that we get 100 bit strength against uh, sensitization attack. So in this module, we talked about the very first attack on logic locking that we refer to as sensitization attack. The idea is borrowing the sensitization concept from the VLSI testing domain and turning it into an attack on logic locking. We also talk about uh, defense against this attack, which we call strong logic locking. And uh, with this defense, we prevent the individual sensitization of key bits to the outputs and uh, that's how we prevent the sensitization attack. Thank you very much for listening.